program is sponsored by the Islamic Media Foundation, sharing the guidance of Allah through broadcast media and the Internet. This is Moments in History with your host, Ala Salam. Rahim. Dear listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to Moments in History. We have been looking at our history and the moments that were made in this history and the people who made those moments and the changes. However, a great deal of our history has been made by the women of this Ummah. And today, I would like to spend the next few moments with one of the women. Had it been for her, in some of the situations, this Ummah would have been destroyed. Her name was Hind, and she was nicknamed Umm Salama. She was from a wealthy family from the tribe of Makhzum. And that's why she was known as Hind al Mahzumiya. We all know her in our history as Umm Salama. Umm Salama gave a great example in generosity, sacrifice, kindness, and wisdom. She did because the way she was raised, the house in which she grew was the house of one of the greatest leaders in her tribe, house of kindness and generosity. Her father was one of the greatest leaders in the tribe of Makhzum. He was so generous to the extent that he was nicknamed Zad al-Rakib or the need of the traveler. He was named that because travelers did not need to stock on food or any other traveling needs if they passed by his house or accompanied him. Her husband was Abdullah ibn Abdul Asad, one amongst the first ten who accepted Islam. As soon as Quraysh heard of their following to Muhammad and embracing Islam, Quraysh started torturing them in a very barbaric way. When the torture became unbearable, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave them the permission to migrate to Al-Habasha or Abyssinia. In spite of the protection and the safety Umm Salama enjoyed in Al Habasha under the Najashi rules, the king of Al Habasha, that was a man that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the Sahaba when he sent them to when he sent him to Al Habasha, go to this man because on his land nobody is treated unjustly. 
even though she was enjoying the freedom and the just ruling of Al Najashi, she was yearning to go back to Mecca to be with the Prophet. However, she didn't have to wait long. The news came that Al Hamza and Umar ibn al Khattab followed the Prophet and became Muslims. At this point, she decided to go back to Mecca with her family. When they arrived Mecca, soon they found that the leap that they thought that it would be good for them, they found that Quraysh had confronted them with even more vigorous attacks. Because of this, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them and gave them the permission to do another hijra but this time a hijra to al Madina. this is moments in history and we'll be back in a moment Salama and her husband and her son Salama decided to leave Mecca. Many things happened, things that show us the dedication that Umm Salama had, the patience. It also show us the mannerism that prevailed at this time. And even though there was a lot of bad things, there was still good things left around. Let's see Umm Salama telling us the story of her migration to Medina from Mecca. She said, when we decided to leave Mecca to Medina, my husband prepared my camel and my needs. And he put our son Salama in my lap. However, just before we departed from Mecca, some of the men in my tribe, Bani Makhzum, saw us. They came and confronted us. And they said to Abu Salama, my husband, if you have overcome us for yourself, how about your wife? She is our daughter. And they all jumped on him and took me away from him. They pulled me from his hands. As soon as the tribe of my husband saw them, Banu Abdul Asad, as soon as they saw this happening, they got very angry. And they said, by Allah, we will never let you keep the, the child. If you take your daughter, we will take her son. Both tribes came and started to pull Salama 
every tribe to their side. And everyone say, no, he is our child, and he should stay with us. They kept pulling him left and right until they dislocated his hand. Umm Salama remained in Mecca, prisoner. She could not leave for one whole year. She was sitting there thinking of her husband, counting the days and asking herself, when would she be released? She didn't have to wait more than the time she waited, approximately a year, until her cousins thought to, them, to themselves and said, well, we should not leave Umm Salama to suffer more than this. And we should try to negotiate to let her get together with her husband. The negotiation was successful, and they let her go with her child to finally meet with her husband in Medina. However, on her way to Medina, as she was leaving Mecca, something amazing happened, something that shows that there is was still good, a lot of good around, a lot of people with their good manners and morals and ethics were still living around in this place. As she was leaving with her son, there was one of the kafar from Quraysh walking by. His name was Uthman ibn Talha. He saw her, and he said, Where are you hidden? She said, I'm hidden to Medina to get with my husband. And out of amazement, he looked at her and he said, Alone? She said, Yes. Uthman ibn Talha even though Umm Salama was considered his enemy, he was kafir, she was a Muslim. He refused to let her go alone, would be subject to any raid or attack. He told her, I will accompany you. We are talking here about 500 kilometers journey. He would go on a sh very short time notice. He just found out that she was going alone, and he decided to accompany her to protect her all the way to Medina, walk with her 500 kilometers. They did. Umm Salama described him and his manners during the journey. And she said that she had never seen a man as kind and as generous as Uthman ibn Talha was. If she wanted to rest, he would bring the camel down to sit, and then he would walk away so that she would feel safe and secure to come down. And he would not look at her until she called on him. Then he would come back and help her and help her camel to continue the trip to Medina. And he kept doing this all the time. Umm Salama was amazed from his behavior until she got to Medina. At this point, the man did not even want to sit to rest. He told her, you're safe now. Now, 
I can head back to Mecca. And Uthman ibn Talha head back to Mecca. At the time, Uthman ibn Talha was not a Muslim. And this was his manners. Later, Uthman ibn Talha embraced Islam. This is Moments in History, and we'll be back in a moment. Finally, Umm Salama, and after a year of torture and pain, she got together with her husband, Abu Salama, in Medina. Abu Salama prepared himself to go with Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the Battle of Badr. And after the Battle of Badr, he went with him to the Battle of Uhud. And he was wounded. And when he was wounded, he told to his wife about a dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him. He said to her, if something happens to me, say this dua. Because if you say this dua, Allah will answer this dua no matter what. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him to say, O oh Allah, I rely on you in this misfortune. O oh Allah, Replace me with better things than the ones that I lost. He said to her, if you say this dua, Allah will give you better things than what you lost. Abu Salama knew that he was going to die. Soon after, Abu Salama passed away in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah made a dua for him that Allah forgives him and place him in Jannah. Umm Salama said the dua as her husband taught her. After a while, Abu Bakr Siddiq wanted to marry her. So did Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umm Salama refused both of them to eventually have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ask her hands in marriage. She said to Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, I have three characteristics that you need to know about. I am a very jealous woman. I am old and I have children. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, As for the jealousy, I ask Allah to take it away from you. As for your age, I am also old. And as for your children, your children are my children. Umm Salama became one of the mothers of the believers. To one more time leave her mark on the history of this Ummah in a situation that would have brought the anger and the wrath 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the companions of the Prophet. During the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, during Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, when the Sahaba refused to listen to the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to shave their heads, Rasulullah went inside his tent and he looked very sad. And Umm Salam asked him what happened. He told her. And when he did, she told him, say nothing to them. And here is what you do. Go out, talk to no one, shave your head, and they will all follow. And Rasulullah did. And what she told him, exactly word for word happened. It was the wisdom of Umm Salama that saved this Ummah. It was the patience and sacrifice that built a history deeply rooted in the ground of good examples of how a woman can change the history of an Ummah. It is very important for us today to learn from Umm Salama and more importantly to learn from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who did not belittle her opinion and he went outside and did what she told him to do word for word Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a man who did not have ego or arrogance to listen to anyone as long as their opinion was on the truth and was wise it is a great lesson for us to look at our wives in a little bit different way, to listen when they advise. It is not shame, it is not bad that a man would be wrong and a woman would be right. Unfortunately, to some people it is the case. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us that the best amongst you is the best to his wife or family and I am the best to my wives. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not just listen to Umm Salama at this occasion. But it was the habit of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to seek the advice from anyone. It is a habit that we need to learn. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to cook and do the things that what we label them as women work at home, do these things at home for his family. When Aisha radiallahu anha was asked, tell us, what does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do at home when he's not doing his work outside? She said, he would do the house chores. He would do the housework. He would cook. He would clean. That was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is very important for us to realize that our wives are different 
from being our means. That they have to be given the respect that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given to his wives. It is very important to learn from the greatest man on earth, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how to be kind, how to be generous, how to be respectful to our wives. Because if we say that these are the women who are entrusted with raising this ummah, they represent half of this ummah. If they do not get the freedom, the respect they deserve, what kind of ummah this ummah would be? Until next time, this is Moments in History. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This program has been sponsored by the Islamic Media Foundation, sharing the guidance of Allah through broadcast media and the Internet. The following is NBA Star.